you for attending. I hope you've had a beautiful weekend and have had a very, very good Monday morning, well, afternoon, evening of learning. Now, uh, as Serge Breed has rightly introduced me, um, I'm an optometrist by profession. I'm 24 years of age, studied at Aston Uni in the Midlands, um, and I'm born and bred in the Midlands. Now, during my university time, when you are in an academic environment, um, it's very integral that we take every opportunity we can for learning. That perhaps, yes, we have our discipline which we're in, and we're looking beyond at our, our jobs and our future, but it's also good to get involved in politics, philosophy, and history. Especially when you are in that academic environment, it's integral that we take a bit more than perhaps just a degree and a, um, a letter and a document say you are equipped to uh, continue, continue on in life. Now, being brought up um, in Britain, as we all probably are here, we have our links back to Punjab, many will come from Sikh families, um, and we are kind of stuck in a bit of a time war where Gurnana came to the Punjab, when Nangana said, but now we're in Britain uh, and London as we are today. And as many will know, we used to be the sovereigns of the Punjab under Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Only in 1849, so we're not talking too far ago. And then even if we look at Maharaja Dilip Singh, who came slightly later. So we have very, very strong links here in Britain. Now today, my lecture is titled The Britishers and the Sikh Nation. Now, if we look at colonialism and if we look at the idea of religion, and if you look at the Guru Granth Sahib Ji, and if you look at, at supplementary information, you will actually find that we are actually a nation, a nation in itself, where we have a distinct identity, a distinct philosophy, and we have a common linkage between people, which is perhaps very, very different compared to different groups in the Indian nation, Indian state at the very moment. Now, in my, in my title, we're talking about sacrifice, treachery, deceit, reinventions, and now, hopefully, a resurgence. Now, we'll be talking at quite some detail about what I'm trying to, to, to talk about here. But just to give you an idea, so during the time of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, we, the Sikhs had an empire, um, and later on, Maharaja Dilip Singh comes on board after a bit of treachery. And, and so when I talk about sacrifice, I'm talking about the Anglo-Sikh Wars, which occurred from uh, the British Empire and the Khalsa Army, um, which, you can, which we will talk about a bit later on. Now, in terms of tre treachery, we're talking about the Dogra sort of generals who were kept <coughs> very, very near to Ranjit Singh and who instilled um, sort of intrigue, and the Dogras had wanted power. And in terms of deceit regarding the British role in annexating, annexating the Punjab in 1849, and then later on, we're talking about the reinvention, and we're talking about colonialism and its effect on the Sikh identity, and um, Gurbani, and the way we perhaps as Sikhs kind of perceive the world. And hopefully we'll talk about the resurgence. Now, if we look at our own history and how we're perceived by, by, by Britain, we're kind of the, the modern minority community. And coming back down to the reinventions that were perhaps perceived and have been changed uh, our DNA has kind of been changed in order to fit the status quo. Now, today, what my presentation will involve will be pri primarily photographs and quotations. Now, we're all university students here, well, the majority of you are, I'm not, but we have a certain intellect and intelligence, and we can make up our own ideas relating to religion and, uh, and even political opinion. So I will be kind of your tour guide today, and it will kind of hopefully follow like a novel where we'll be following and going from different time periods and I hope what I'm trying to portray to you today will make a lot of sense. Now even on my presentation slide we've got a few different characters here which relate to very very different time periods. Now Maharaja and Singh had married perhaps many many wives and had many many offspring. Now the gentleman on the far left Maharaja Nornihal Singh was the son of Maharaja Karak Singh who actually ascended to become the Maharaja of the Sikh Empire, but passed away quite early, as did Maharaja Nornihal Singh. And even it said that he was assassinated by the Dogra generals who later spewed intrigue. Now, next to him, we have a gentleman called Devinder Singh Parmar. Now, he came to England in 1955. 
and kind of talked about an idea of a Sikh homeland relating back to, to the Ranjit Singh time and even from the times of Banda Singh Bahadur who created a Khalsa Republic. Now on that particular photograph, that's actually towards Downing Street and even when we look at when our, our elders came to Britain, perhaps our identity by having the fog on your head, it wasn't seen as something which would be tolerated and even Back in, in, in the 60s, 70s, many, many different problems occurred related to identity. And that particular gentleman, the British had enforced a law stating that you had to wear a helmet on top of your bug, which the Sikhs did not allow. And at that time, um, the Vindas Singh Pramad actually broke the law and rode a motorbike down Downing Street um, and he had his decide on. Then we look over at Princess Sophia Dilip Singh, who many of you will know about and uh, has a lot of history related um, to the surrounding areas. A suffragette, a revolutionary, um, and a daughter of Maharaja Dilip Singh. And over to, his, to her right-hand side, Hari Singh Nalwa. Now, many of, you, many of you probably would have heard um, Sidhu Musevala's new, new song relating to General Hari Singh Nalwa. And I actually find that my ancestry traces to him um, being an Uppal by my, um, by my, by, by my last name. And over to his right hand side, we have a gentleman called Balvinder Singh Jatana, who's part of a, a, a guerrilla kind of movement, a freedom organization by the name of Babar Khalsa. And he and even Sidhu Musawala had did a song relating to um, the, the Punjab waters in the SYL um, song. Over to the far right, another gentleman who came and was prominent during the partition period and later in the 50s. Now, on the poster, many of you probably would have seen a photograph just literally popped down on the far bottom right-hand side. Now, that relates to um, a period in 1922, and the last few weeks we marked 100 years of it. Now, some of you may have heard of a place called Banja Sahib, which is currently now in Pakistan, which has a lot of history related to Guru Nanak, where Guru Nanak had actually put his hand, his palm up to stop um, a big boulder from coming down. Now, even if we look at our Gurdwara, our, the Sikh um, sort of what we call now a place of worship, it's actual institution of being a place for education, for mentally and even physical in terms of Lungan and even in terms of the whole practice of Girtan and coming back to sort of the, um, sort of the discussion that we have um, when we have elders coming on stage. Now, relating back to 1922, so we spoke about the annexation of the Punjab in 1849. Um, and the British had known that the Sikh people get their power from Guru Granth Sahib Ji, from Gurbani, from their history, which makes them very, very brave and fearless individuals. So if you want to break a Sikh from his philosophy, you hit the Gurdwara. You go to the in institution where they get their mental and physical sustenance. And during that particular time, from 1849 onwards, the, the Gurdwara setting had, be, had changed rapidly, where they had individuals called Mahants, who perhaps took over the institution, but had played it very, very differently. And, and during that particular time, we had what we call a Gurdwara reform movement. And going back to that reformation, where the Gurdwaras were undertaken by individuals who didn't respect or have that understanding of that Khalsa identity or that philosophy that we keep close to our heart today. Now, in the photograph, you can see that many, many different people are actually coming in front of, uh, of, the, of the mowing train. Now, coming back to it, on that particular train were many, many different Sikh revolutionaries. And what the, the Sikhs in, in that part of, uh, of Pakistan, modern day Pakistan, what they wanted to do was to give the revolutionaries longer. They wanted to give them food. Now they had seeked permission from the from the government, well from the police to, to stop um, the particular train so they could feed every revolutionary in that particular train. But unfortunately the, the, the stopwatch and in terms of those who were in charge would not allow it. But such was the power that they wanted to serve um, and be brave and to feed everybody longer. A few of the things had decided, okay, we're, we're gonna stop the train and here's how we're going to do it. So many of them had started to, to get onto that rail track and the train would not stop and, and in the end bodies were crumpled uh, and crinkled down, limbs were lost, many um, two were shaheed um, and in the end Lungard was uh, served to all. Now I mean we're talking 1922, 100 years ago, 
Now we talk about Lungard, I do know next week that we've got the soup kitchen where many of you may attend for. Uh, and perhaps Lungard has changed very, very rapidly from what it used to be and when Good Nine had perhaps started that sort of uh, limb of, of the institution. But it kind of gives you an idea, and even if you read um, sort of the description by uh, a gentleman who was actually present, uh, and uh, that we talk about how they just carried on remembering the Almighty, and even throughout our history, even if you look at the Battle of Jamkor, where Guru Gobind Singh's two older sons had actually given Shahidi, and how they were so outnumbered, but from their bravery and, their, and, their, and how valiant they were, they managed to um, obviously sort of secure victory. But I feel it's very, very important that we look at our anniversaries when they come, especially when it is a hundred years, and to remember that. As a, especially as a new generation, we need to look at our history to work out who we are and what happened before. Now, I went down to Churchill War Rooms, which isn't too far from here. So what I like to do is to look at current events, history, but even from my own experience. Now, Churchill War Room, during the time of World War II, they had an underground bunker where all political meetings relating to the British tactics uh, and what to do um, if, if perhaps Britain was to be bombed, especially central London. Now, we talked about that reform movement where, they, where the individuals and the collective were looking to take back control of the Gurdwara. And that same particular um, eyewitness referred to the SGPC, which is the Shromani Gurdwara Purbanda Committee, who kind of operate and run the Golden Temple, the Sahib, and many, many different kind of historical Gurdwara in modern day Punjab. Uh, East Punjab. Now, even if you do start to read that particular slide, you'll, you'll notice that the whole kind of war room, war council comes back into it. And it comes back to the, to, to the idea that we are a nation, that we are an army. And even if you look at the, the foundation of the Khalsa in 1699, and how we became that army, and that whoever would become and take Amrit would be initiated into the fold. And and you'll, you'll notice that throughout my presentation that we're coming back to that collective and how we are an army. And it was very, very integral that the Gurdwari were reformed in order for, for, the, for the common man, for the sick, to get that mental and physical sustenance that they required for life. Now, we come back to the individual who we saw at the beginning slide. And even if we look at, at an army attire, where if you look at the British army, they would have a certain attire. And similarly, in the 1940s, the, the Akalis, who we call the immortal, the immortal, so when one gives their head to Guru Gobind Singh Ji and becomes part of Akalsa, they become that common denominator, whereby everybody is equal, but they have a task at hand. Their head is given to the Guru. And even if you can, can have a look at that photograph from 1940. Now, we're talking just prior to partition here, and the Sikh viewpoint related to partition perhaps varied over the years as we will touch upon. Now in the middle you have a gentleman called Master Tara Singh, who is perhaps the, the equivalent of Muhammad Jinnah or Mahatma Gandhi and Nehru for our particular community. But I will want to pick out just a gentleman on the, on the left hand side of Master Tara Singh and he went by the name of Jetada Darshan Singh Feruma. Now after partition the Sikhs and the Punjabis had sort of um, demonstrated for a very, very long period of time and felt that perhaps they weren't treated equally in the, in the Punjab. 